Hi, I'm Kevin from DTools, and in this video, I will provide an introduction to design with Visio. I'd like to provide a quick overview of this topic. Visio is a great drawing tool to work with because it allows shapes to be connected to data. This allows us to create drawings through this drag and drop interface where items in our bill of material are connected to drawings. And don't worry, you don't need to be a CAD expert or have drawing experience to make drawings that look great. And in our integration, there are four types of drawings that we can use for your projects. The first is a line diagram, next is an elevation, plan view, and schematics. And in this video, we'll talk about each of these. Okay, as we get started, I have a project here uh, that has been created. I want you to note that it is what is called a quantity-based project, and we're not going to use quantity-based projects uh, when we're working with Visio. So if you're familiar with quantity-based projects and they are something that you are using for quoting, you're going to need to convert the project to unit-based prior to working with Visio. Otherwise, any items that have a quantity, only one item will be dropped on a Visio drawing um, per line item, even if the quantity is greater than one. So the first step, we're gonna go here to check out. We'll go ahead and check our project out. And then notice right here next to that is convert to unit-based project. So if you're gonna create drawings as part of your design and quoting phase prior to contract, you're gonna to wanna to manually convert the project if you started as quantity-based. Otherwise, if this is happening after contract, then during the project approval step, uh, the project will get converted to unit-based for you. I'll go ahead and convert it here. It lets me know that this is a one-way uh, conversion that cannot be undone. I'll go ahead and click OK and let that happen. So my project's been converted. Now we have the project checked out and I'm gonna come right down to the files section and I'm gonna click new and pick Visio drawing. This is gonna give me access to a set of templates. I'll pick something like my standard uh, SI uh, 36 by 24 template. The system provides a default name for the drawing, which you can uh, just change that right here if you'd like. And I'll go ahead and click okay. So the drawing is gonna be opened. Visio is launching on the system as well as uh, the details project opening at the same time. I'd like to note that the first time that you launch Visio uh, with a project, there will be a prompt to download stencil files. You're gonna want to go ahead and do that. It may take a few minutes to download all the stencils and load them into your system. And that's gonna show up in this area where you have access to all of the various uh, shapes that you'll be using as you create your drawings. So let's just do a quick walkthrough of the different drawing types. So the template uh, does come with some pre-created uh, pages. So there's a blank cover sheet page. Uh, if you'd like to get the title block on that page, you can simply right click, go to page setup. And in the background section, you're gonna choose the title page background. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. And when I click okay, <clears throat> the title page is shown on uh, the drawing. And then I'll go ahead and switch to the line diagram I mentioned before. Now, my project, if I click the project editor, notice is a blank project. I have a few options for how I add items, right, as you may know. So let's say that I add uh, an item from this screen. Maybe you want to add a display. So I'll do something like uh, type in the word display and do a search. And I can pick an item from my catalog. Let's say that I'm going to pick a Samsung display and just drag it to the screen here. And in my case, there's some accessories. I'll just go ahead and accept that. And you'll see that now I have this display and then I will just drag it here, alt tab back to Visio. Now, if you have multiple screens, you're going to want to go ahead and simply um, drop your project editor on one screen and Visio on the other. Now you might be wondering, um, you know, what, what, what's the shape that I got? So it's a simple representation 
of a product when there's no image. If I double click it, it is, it is tied to the record for that product that I added to the project. And notice here, there's no image available um, for the thumbnail. And that's just because for some reason I don't have that, but I can come up here to web and go to Google images and it will actually open my browser, do a search for this, this display. Let's say this is the one I want. I'll click that and right click here and I'm simply, uh, I'm actually going to do copy image address. There are some images that will have some strange effects, but if I use uh, the copy image address, of our interface can directly pull the image instead of using your Windows clipboard. So I'll go ahead and paste it and I get a nice image there. I'll go ahead and save it. Um, so I'm just going to delete the shape, which just removed the shape from the drawing, and then I'll drag it on again. And this time we get our small uh, kind of thumbnail image. Now let's go back here and I want to show you a quick feature. If I clone this and click OK, so I'll have now two of these displays. If I open one up, there's a feature in here called large image. And if I go to the large image and I paste, notice it's pasting the larger version of the image that I pulled off the website. Go ahead and drag this one on, and we're gonna get a much nicer image. You'll notice that I can scale this up. The quality still looks really nice. As I try to scale this one up, you'll see that the quality is not the same. So the one on the left is a thumbnail, the one on the right is the using the large image feature. So if you're interested in using the line diagram, I encourage you to investigate that large image and replace it for your drawings. Uh, that was the line diagram. Let's take a look at the elevation view. So I can go to the same device and bring it into an elevation page. Now notice that I get what appears to be a generic flat panel display shape. I want to point out that um, it does in fact show the manufacturer and the model as well as the unique component ID of the item in my project. If I double click, it is, a, it is tied to the product. And I want you to note that in the elevation view, a couple of things are going on. One is it's using the height and width to represent uh, that display on the screen. And it's also keying off of the category and subcategory information, that's what tells Visio uh, or tells Dtools in Visio what shape to use, which is a shape under the elevation shapes option called flat panel TV. So based on that category and subcategory, it knows to use this shape. It pulls the dimensional data to represent it to scale. Um, also notice something called shape data. So if I wanna look at shape data, I can select a shape, right click and go to data and click shape data and it'll open this window and any shape that I select shows me uh, what shape it is and information about it. Notice that the frame thickness is 1.5. I can on any, on any display, I can manipulate that value and notice that I have that nice thin bezel now. So those are some options there. So notice so far I was adding products from my bill of materials, but what if I was to grab say the, an equipment rack shape and drag it to the page? Details will prompt me um, it is actually filtered to some categories and subcategories specific to equipment racks. I'll go ahead and grab something like the MRK4426 and assign it. Actually, I'll just go ahead and include my accessories and you'll see this shape is going to yeah, stretch out to be the size of the MRK. Now, I want you to also notice that, for instance, if I was to drag something like a U2 onto the drawing, it does in fact snap a U2 right into one of my uh, rack units. Now, if I double click just real quick to confirm how this works, under the specification section, again, it's using the height and the width here, as well as the fact that this is 44 rack units. So the 44 is what is driving the number of rack spaces that are available to snap items into that you can see there um, as I move the shape around. So let's go ahead and move on to the plan view. Uh, there are several options for inserting plan drawings. There is a feature called insert PDF background that allows you to 
browse to the PDF you have, it loads it to the cloud, um, and will convert that and drop it into a page on your drawing. You can also use um, some other features like insert from CAD file, which is here. You can do a CAD drawing. Um, you can also copy and paste from certain image types if that works for you. If you're not looking for a perfect drawing with scale, um, I would recommend you consider that. A uh, quick view of what this might look like. So if I was to grab again to this display and drop it on the plan view, it's going to use a shape that represents um, a TV in the plan view. If I was to maybe add some speakers, you'll see something like a speaker shape here. If I go to maybe a Sonance and I will go ahead and go to speakers and we're going to get kind of a generic speaker shape. Now in my system, I've applied some data shape properties to um, these shapes, which you can learn more about um, through our support site to get some more advanced um, uh, understanding of some of these features. And then let's just move right on to the schematic view. And again, I'm going to grab one of these displays, drop it in. And if it has inputs and outputs, we get a shape with inputs and outputs. So let's say that this TV is being fed by some sort of a switcher. So if I said um, maybe it's an NVX type product, if I have an NVX here, maybe. So uh, let's see what we have. I'm going to grab both of these and drag them in. And I want you to notice that when I drop these items in, they do in fact get added to my bill of materials and this blue dot here tells me they're on the drawing. I can click back to Visio. So I'm just going to use the one of them. Let's say it's the 35 here that's feeding it and I have, um, I need an HDMI cable. Now, a lot of times these products might actually come with cables if I have those set as accessories in my uh, catalog. I do have a power cable for one of these, but I don't have any other types. I have some generic HDMI cables here. So I'm gonna do something like this three foot generic cable, drop it in, and then we'll go ahead and connect it to one HDMI output and an HDMI input. And I can go ahead and clean this up a little bit. I'm just using my arrow keys on the keyboard, but you can see I have uh, one device and another device with a cable connected. So that is your introduction to the different drawing types um, in Visio. I do want to show one more thing, which is just this title page background, which is a special page that shows the title and it is referenced on each of these other pages, but it is a special page that does not print. Um, and you might've noticed that when I set it from the cover sheet, I was just referencing this title page background.